Yo, what's going on guys, it's Houston Sports Talk back in the video today, and today we're going to be talking about a potential NBA trade that would send one of the most, one of the best talents in the NBA when I think with 3 and D players and young defensive stars and OG Anunoby to the Golden State Warriors, and the Warriors would be making a splash, getting rid of their two young players. Um, that have been on the trade market for a while with Jordan Poole and Jonathan Kaminga and in return to get OG Ananobi. That is not the, the full trade, but those that's that is what the trade is, you know, centered around. Uh pit, a lot of picks going to Toronto in this trade proposal. But I'm gonna be talking to you know, proposing making proposing the trade and also talking about what I think, you know, this trade could do for both squads. But let's get into it. So the Warriors are reportedly going to have a lot of interest in OG Ananobi this offseason, and they might be looking to get rid of Jordan Poole and Jonathan Kaminga as well and could potentially be looking to trade the two of them for OG Ananobi and a huge deal. And I think it could be a really good deal for the Warriors. They need to get some help alongside OG. I mean, along. sorry. They need to get some help alongside Stephen Curry. And Clay Thompson, not only offensively, but defensively. And can we talk about the defensive lineup that the Warriors would have? I don't even know what the lineup would be. I guess Curry would, Curry, of, course, of course, Curry and Clay are the one and the two. OG's the three. Um, and I guess Andrew Wiggins is the four. And Draymond's the five. The defensive lineup right there you got OG Ananobi, an amazing defender, can guard every five positions, all five positions. Andrew Wiggins, we saw how he defended Jason Tatum in the finals last year. He's an amazing defender. Draymond Green, multiple-time defensive player of the year. Um, and then off the bench, you have Gary You have Gary Payton II, um, who's an amazing defensive player. And also, I guess you would consider Kevin Looney as a really solid defensive player. So you have those two players off the bench. You have OG, off, you know, you have OG Wiggins, and Draymond starting. And then you have... Then you have Gary Payton the second and Kevin Looney uh, off the bench. The Warriors defense with those, you know, those four those five guys I just mentioned, three starters, two off the bench. The Warriors would have a pretty, pretty scary defense to face for opposing NBA offenses. Let's get into the I'm gonna get more into it, but let's get into what the trade would look like. Um for the Warriors and the Raptors. So the Warriors would not only receive OG Ananobi, but they would also receive two other players. So, since the Warriors were kind of stupid and paid Jordan Poole $28 million a year for a four-year contract, um, and Kaminga also has $6 million, OG Ananobi's $18 million would not be able, that would not, you know, salary-wise, would not be able to cut it. So, the Raptors would send Thaddeus Young and OG Ananobi to the Golden State Warriors, and also DJ Wilson, who, it, this, he doesn't really matter in this trade, he's just a contract filler. So is kind of Thaddeus Young, but I also think there is a potential chance the Warriors could keep Thaddeus Young, which at that point there's not really a there's not really a re I honestly I think the Warriors would probably keep Thaddeus Young so I, I and, and play him off the bench. So I honestly think the Warriors would keep him. Um DJ Wilson doesn't matter, he'll probably get cut or you know, not if not cut right away, he'll be cut, you know, in training camp or, or preseason. Uh he's a solid player, but He's just a contract filler. And then the Raptors, what they would be receiving. Jordan Poole and Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody go to the Toronto Raptors in this trade. And then the Warrior then the Warriors give them four picks as well. Their 2023 first round pick, which is which is the nineteenth overall pick in this year's draft. And then two first round picks where I think these are Two really solid first round picks. If the Warriors, you know, if Curry as a thirty eight and thirty seven year old is, you know, not as productive as a, I none of this might sound stupid, but Curry could be a different player in three years. Um, I think he'll still be a elite superstar, but, um, I mean, compare look look how LeBron's you know done at thirty eight years old compared to what he was at thirty five. Thirty five, what. 2023 2020 lebron was an i mean lebron's still a really good player he scored 40 tonight in game in game four but i think lebron has you know compared to three years ago i think lebron was a way better player he was younger he was more athletic i think he was a better shooter um right i mean yes he kind of shot the ball good tonight in game four but i think 
LeBron was a way better shooter uh, three years ago than he is now. I'm not saying Curry's going to get worse at shooting or athleticism, but I think there is a chance, you know, when three years, that's, you know, to 38 years old, there is a chance Curry, you know, starts to age a little bit. Um, and with with Clay's injuries, who knows if he'll be playing in three years. I mean, I I would think Clay's still playing in three years. Who knows if that's for the Warriors? Who knows if he's still playing that well with some of the injuries he's had in the last uh, three years or so or last four years. So I think there's th- those first-round picks in 2025 and 2026, which I do have the Raptors receiving this trade, could be some solid picks if the Warriors kind of fall apart. Uh, because OG Ananobi, you're only guaranteeing him for two years because he's he's on a two-year contract, although I do think the Warriors would be able to re-sign him. But Jordan Poole, Jonathan Kaminga, um, Poole's locked up for four years, Kaminga's locked up for two, and then the Raptors get a 2025 first-round pick, which is top three protected, and a 2026 first-round pick, which is top three protected. I think it has to be protective at, at, at a point, just you know, looking at maybe the Warriors are not the same Warriors they are now with Curry and Clay. I don't know what Clay would I know Curry would be 38 um, in 2026, but I don't know what Clay would be. I think Clay's younger than Curry. I think Clay would be... 34 35 and I could I could be wrong on this but I think Clay would be 34 35 in 2026. I'm not sure on that. So the so the Raptors would get Jordan Poole, Jonathan Kaminga um 2026 and 2026 2025 and 2026 first round picks and then 2023 first round pick which is the 19th overall pick. And then also the Warriors would give them a 2025 round uh, uh, r- second round pick, which is via Charlotte, uh, which could be a decent second round pick. So they get a second, three first, one, which one is the 19th overall pick, Jordan Poole, Jonathan Kaminga, and then the Warriors get Young, Ananobi, and DJ Wilson. Um, I don't know how fans are going to react to this trade. I've done a lot of OG Ananobi, on, Ananobi videos, and all, almost all the comments have been, you know, it's not enough. But I think this trade is something. It's enough. The the Raptors are looking for good players in return for uh, OG Ananobi. They're looking for an area of two to three first round picks. Both apply here. Jonathan Kaminga is a young star, and I think if he gets minutes on the Raptors, is if he's a starter, I think Jonathan Jonathan Kaminga is going to go full full stars here. Then Jordan Poole. I know people talk about his playoff struggles, but. Jordan Poole was amazing in the regular season. And we're talking about Jordan Poole being a starter for the Raptors here. Um, compared to that's something I think Jordan Poole would be really solid. This is a this is not a Raptors team that is competing for championships. This is a Raptors team that's probably highest ce- ceiling is the play-in tournament. If OG Ananobi is away from the team and assuming they're going to probably trade Pascal as well, lose Fred Van Vliet in free agency, the high ceiling is the play-in tournament. And the low is one of the top three worst teams in the Easter Conference. So I think Jordan Poole on a you know team that is the 13 to, to 9 seed in the Eastern Conference in that area, I think Jordan's going to be a really good player during the regular season. Um, and the stress kind of goes off his shoulders. I mean, and, he, and Jordan Poole is actually a really good uh, regular season player. Uh, but the question is when the Raptors, at some point the Raptors are going to get you know, to the point where they're back in it. You know, this is a. I don't think this is a long term rebuild. I think this is a short term rebuild because if you look at some of the pieces the Raptors have, they have Scotty Barnes, uh, a young talent. They had trade pieces like OG Ananobi and OG Ananobi and that will have multiple trade pieces. OG Ananobi is a trade piece as well as. Uh, Pascal Siakam, they have the 13th overall pick, which I could see them potentially trying to trade up or maybe move that 13th overall pick. Uh, they they have, as well as, I guess in this case, if this trade doesn't happen, I guess Thaddeus Young is a trade piece. Um, I could see someone maybe trying to make a move for Thaddeus Young. You're not going to get a lot back for him, but I guess he is a trade piece at that point. Uh, they could get some if, if Fred Van Vliet decides to go to the Suns or the Magic. It, there could be a trying and uh, sign and trade, so there is a chance they could get something back for Fred Van Vliet. So the Raptors have a lot of trade pieces this summer. Um, so I think if they make the right pieces, and right make the right moves, I don't think this is a. I think this is a two to three year, maybe a two year rebuild. Tops two years. I mean, honestly, I think it's a one year to two year rebuild for the Raptors with all their trade assets and all the things they can get back for their good players. 
So, and then the young talent they have, I don't think this is a long rebuild at all for the Toronto Raptors. And I mean, I mean, yeah, I I think it's a solid trade. You move on for Ananobi, you get some really good first. I think not only as well if they're trying to you know get back in a good state and uh, maybe maybe they're going to want to keep those first round picks from the Warriors. Those first round picks from the Warriors could be very valuable. It's like having a first round, you know, the Lakers first round picks in 2027 and 2028 are so valuable because they might not be that good in 27 and 28, but the Warriors might be solid in 25 and 26, but I don't think they're going to be a championship contender in 2025 and 2026. I think that could even be a lottery pick in 2026. Uh, Will Stephen, we we don't know what's going to happen in three years. Will Stephen Curry still be playing for the Warriors? I mean, we've heard some stuff, some, you know, I don't think Stephen Curry's ever going to leave the Warriors, but there, there's been some stuff about, you know, Steph maybe being traded or, or leaving at some point, the Warriors. So we don't know what's going to happen with the Warriors in, in three three years, four years, whatever, uh, three years, four, four seasons. We don't know what's going to happen. So I think that's that makes those picks valuable. Uh, but the Raptors are getting everything they want. They want valuable players. They want good players that will bring you know good impact to their team. I think Poole and Kaminga do the do both do the both do that right there. Um, and they want two to three first round picks. And I think in this case, these are good first round picks. I think the twenty twenty five and the twenty twenty six are good first round picks. Uh, the nineteenth overall pick, it's not bad, but it's 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 not it, it's it's not bad, but it's not good. It's a solid pick. Um, and then, a, and then an extra second, um, and then you, you also get, re- you also get to get rid of the contract of Thaddeus Young, who is not that great of a player and kind of, I think, honestly, in my opinion, I think to be paid almost $9 million with Thaddeus Young is, is a way, a little bit of an overpayment payment. Thaddeus Young is a solid player, but I don't think he deserves $9 million a year. So for the Warriors to take that problem over the, the Raptors' hands, um, the Warriors also, the Raptors also get Jordan Poole and Jonathan Kaminga, um, and the, the first round picks they want. I think it's a good deal for the Raptors, and I think eventually they would turn this thing around and become, you know, eventually be back to to trying to compete for, you know, compete in the playoffs. I'm not gonna say compete for a championship because I think the the Warriors in this trade they're they're back and competing for a championship with Curry. Clay, OG, and Draymond, and Wiggins being the lineup, uh, but I think the Raptors, you know, give it a, a year or two, and you know, get some good stuff around for get some good stuff back for Pascal Siakam and OG Ananobi, and maybe even flip some of that stuff, and you could you could build a solid roster around Scotty Barnes and Jordan Poole and Jonathan Kaminga and whatever you get back for Pascal Siakam. So I I, I think this could be a decent short rebuild for the Raptors and I think it's amazing for the Warriors this trade proposal I think OG Ananobi and that I like that like I said that defensive lineup lineup of OG Ananobi Andrew Wiggins and Draymond Green would probably be it would it would definitely be the the best defensive it would definitely be the best defensive starting starting defensive front court in the NBA with OG Ananobi Andrew Wiggins and Draymond Green um and Stephen you got Stephen Clay at the at the on the in the backcourt as the shooters and then OG and not only is OG a really good shooter as well as lo- along with alongside his defense and then Wiggins also another solid shooter Draymond not so not so himself um and then I think some players would want to come and sign with the Warriors with this trade happening I mean if you're a free agent you see the lineup of you know OG Ananobi Clay Thompson Steph Curry Draymond Green and Andrew Wiggins. I mean, and then and then you got Gary Payton the second and and Kevin Looney off the bench. I think some free agents would maybe want to come to Golden State. They might have to take a. I don't. I don't even think they have to take a pay cut because Ananobi's contract is 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 not that much. It's only eighteen million. So some free agents off the bench would off you know bench free agents might want to come to the Warriors and that could be another good thing for Golden State they could they can get some nice bench I think shooting would be something they would need to add in off the bench uh with losing Jordan Poole and Kaminga uh and Moody so in that case I think you know uh, the Warriors would try to look to get some maybe 
a good guard or two or decent forward shooting uh, off the bench. Maybe, I think, uh, potentially, maybe try to sign Seth Curry in free agency and team up Seth and Steph. That would be really interesting to see Seth and Steph play together next year. Uh, maybe trade for Joe Harris. I don't know. Um, I think I think the Warriors will be really solid uh, if this trade happens. I think more players will want to come to Golden State with Steph, Clay, and OG there, and Draymond and, and Andrew. Uh, but yeah, I, th- I think it. Um, I think it's it would be a really solid trade for both sides. And you guys have your thoughts on the trade idea. And that's it for the video. If you guys enjoyed, peace out.